Today I want to talk about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure and work an example problem. In a past video I just kind of looked at Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure and talked about it with the different variables and relationships that were involved, but I want to work through an actual example which takes up some time. And so I want to remind you of what Dalton's Law is. Remember John Dalton of um, Atomic Theory fame also was studying gases and he said that the total pressure in a system which we'll call p total is equal to the sum of the partial pressures so if i have a system that's made up of if we look at this example here it looks like it's made up of oxygen and carbon dioxide then the total pressure of that system is going to be the partial pressure of the oxygen plus the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide and notation wise this is the way that we'd write it out. So it's a capital P for pressure with the sub of whatever the identity is of the, um, of the gas that you're talking about. And the other thing that shakes out of this is this relationship between the number of moles and that pressure. So there's a direct relationship between kind of the number of the pressure or the partial pressure of oxygen and the number of moles of oxygen. And that's directly proportional to the partial pressure from the carbon dioxide and the number of moles of carbon dioxide, which is directly proportional to the total. So there's this direct relationship then between number of moles of a gas and the pressure of a system, which makes sense because the more stuff I have in there, the more it's going to collide with the outside walls of the container, which means that I'm going to increase my pressure. That's that direct relationship. When one of the variables goes up, the other one goes up. So that's just a reminder on Dalton's Law. We can use this to solve problems that look like this one. So I have a 10 liter flask. So for visualizing what that looks like, picture five two liter bottles. So a 10 liter flask, pretty big, has 1.031 grams of oxygen and less carbon dioxide in it. And we're at 18 degrees Celsius, so kind of a chilly, chillyish room temperature or slightly below room temperature. And it wants to know the mole fraction of oxygen. So right now that doesn't really look much like a gas law problem because the mole fraction is the part, so mole fraction right here, is the part, and we're looking at oxygen in particular, over the total. Now this is going to be important when we get to the follow-up, which is what are the partial pressures of each gas, but we can start off with the mole fraction. So to figure this out, I need to figure out my number of moles of oxygen, which I can do by converting from grams. So this would just be using the molar mass, so 1.031 grams of oxygen times one mole of oxygen over my 32 grams. So that comes from the periodic table, recall. So, I, you know, 16 times 2, if you have a rounded periodic table, or 15.9999 times 2, which would round similarly, then we end up with 3.222 times 10 to the negative second moles. And then I can do the same operation with my carbon dioxide. So I have less carbon dioxide and my molar mass is greater for every one mole of CO2. So I'm expecting this to be a smaller number, which when I plug that in, I end up with 1.30 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Now in order to get the mole fraction, I need to take the part, which in this case it's asking about the oxygen specifically, over the total. So I need the sum of these guys. And when I take the sum, then I end up with n total, my total number of moles in the system, which in this case is 4.52 times 10 to the negative second. And now I can plug in these data that I just solved for to find my mole fraction. Now mole fraction is a decimal, so when I put this in there, it's a part divided by a total, and it's just going to give me a essentially a percentage or a decimal. It'll spit out a decimal, but I always think about it in terms of a percentage, because that's just the way that my brain works, because when I plug this in, I end up with 0.713. And that's my mole fraction. A mole fraction is 
um, represented by a decimal. But I like to think of it as 71.3% of my total volume is my oxygen, because that's really the information that we're getting from this. And so this is just one way that we can get that information. That's one thing that's important. It's hard to tell based on the masses. We have to compare them based on the moles, as we've seen with a lot of chemical calculations that we've done so far. Now let's look at the follow-up to this. What is the partial pressure of each gas? If we're talking about partial pressures now, we probably are going to be thinking about PV equals NRT. So let's start listing out the variables that we're given and then figure out what we're missing. Let's use N as the total number of moles. We'll talk in a second about how we can do this a number of different ways, but let's start with the total number of moles. My T is given as 18 degrees Celsius, which we know we're going to have to convert to Kelvin. So we're going to add that 273.15, which is going to round to the ones place. So that gives us 291 Kelvin. Now it doesn't give me specific units for my partial pressure. So I'm just going to choose the R value that I feel like using right now because it doesn't tell me otherwise. So I'm going to use the one with atmospheres in it. Liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And it asks for P. Okay. Now, if I use my total number of moles here, then what I'm solving for with PV equals NRT is going to be the total pressure. The other way I could do this and then once I have the total pressure, I know the percentage of it that's oxygen, so I could figure out the partial pressures based on that percentage. And that's the way I'm going to solve this. If you wanted to, though, you could set up two different PV equal NRT setups and use the number of moles for each individual one. So I could do PV equals NRT for my oxygen, and then I could do PV equals NRT for my carbon dioxide, and the P for each of those is going to be the partial pressure for each of the corresponding gases. So that would be one way to do that, and then if you were to add them together, that would give you the total pressure. There's a lot of different ways to do gas law problems, and they all get you at the same thing, so long as you understand the relationships and ratios of everything involved. It's kind of the cool thing about them. Okay, so I'm going to solve for the P total then. So that's going to be equal to NRT over V, which I'm going to plug in from my values over here, times my R0821. Oh, I'm going to leave off the units there because I'm running out of room, but you know that the units are liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and then 291 Kelvin. And that's all divided by my volume, which is already in liters. So with the units on my R there, that's going to divide out the moles in the Kelvin on the top, and it's going to divide out the liters that are on the top of the unit there with my denominator there. And then I'll be left with an answer in atmospheres. So that'll give me my total P, which is 0.108. Okay, so from this, then because I figured out the mole fraction and because there is a direct relationship between the number of moles and the pressure, then whatever this ratio is, whatever this fraction is, it's going to be equal to the fraction of my, or the percentage of my pressure as well. So I can take then 71.3% and multiply it by my P total. So essentially that would be, you know, multiplying this by the mole fraction itself. So 0.713 times my 0 0.108, which I got total, that's going to give me my partial pressure for oxygen of 7.70 times 10 to the negative 2 atmospheres. So that's my P of oxygen. And then what's left over is going to be my P total minus this will give me my carbon dioxide. Or again, the other way I could think about this is I could take this percentage and subtract it from 100, and then that percentage of the total would give me the carbon dioxide. Or I can take the total minus the part, and that'll give me the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Or I could solve PV equals NRT for just the number of moles of carbon dioxide, and that would give me 
the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. <laughs> so again, there's lots of ways to do this. So I'm just going to give you the take home message here. And if we look at this, there's a greater amount of the oxygen. And so its pressure is larger right, than the partial pressure of my carbon dioxide, which makes sense because there's a greater number of particles in there than the carbon dioxide. So it's going to have more of an impact on that total pressure. Okay, so this is just a couple different ways that we can manipulate these numbers, a couple different ways you can think about problem solving with Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. There's a couple key take homes here. It's really that there's this direct relationship between the number of moles and the pressure, and that's going to give you these really handy relationships if we start to tweak some of those variables because of how interconnected all of these relationships are. And if you know your partial pressures, then you can figure out the total. Or if you know the percentage or the mole fraction of your components, then you can figure out the partial pressures based on those components. So lots of cool ways that you can manipulate this and get to the answers that you're looking for. If you have any questions on Dalton's Law or there's anything that I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon.